Dennis Foster here, Focused Outdoor Promotions. As you can tell, we're in the middle of another blustery, blizzardy day here in Northeast South Dakota. Has driven us inside the lodge, but that's all right. We have a trip to prepare for on Lake Erie, Western Basin, big walleyes. It's an exciting place to be this time of year. A lot of plug pulling going on, a little bit of spinners, you name it. We're gonna play with a lot of different presentations while we're out there. Stay tuned for all the action. We're gonna document it through Focus Outdoors TV and through the pages of Midwest Hunting and Fishing Magazine. Well, last day of uh, prep before our spring fishing trip to Lake Erie. You'll see here in a second what we're dealing with in South Dakota. in Bay, specifically on South Bass Island. We have to be fortunate enough to be the host of Island Club Charters. Greater uh, Lake Erie Shores and Islands take great care of us as well too. Keeps us coming back here. Obviously the huge fish is a big draw for us. We've got a brand new boat here. Big fan of these and big water. Not only that, they're also good in some of these smaller lakes. A the guy overlooks that. They don't draft that deeply. They sit down nice and low in the water. When we brought our equipment up to fill this boat up, I had the bottom of a 16-foot enclosed trailer covered. Boxes, all kinds of stuff. For example, crank caddy boxes, galore, so forth. Everybody was a little skeptical about what I was doing. We've got every bit of it in here. But we're late in the day here. We're going to fish close to the islands get a feel for things, make sure everything's working, hopefully catch a few fish, get a good supper, good night's sleep, and we should be swinging hard in the morning. Our first fish of the day, nothing terribly huge, but by God, we uh, got one in the net. This uh, come on a reef runner, kind of a crazy purple, white, green color, but uh, got a good start here. Hopefully, we can put another dozen or so of these, only bigger, in the box. Okay, we got two fish going here. We're uh, kind of on some males here. Well, this might be a small female. I take that back. Well, we're having kind of a tough day on Lake Erie. We come there. With a huge fish, but we're catching some of the bales here, which is fine. We'll get supper out of it. We had uh, kind of a little mini front come through here. Had the wind completely switch on us, but uh, maybe we're going to figure something out here. We've slowed down considerably. We're down to 1-1. One, one. Just got bit, missed one. Just playing with the board and then uh, just picked this little guy up.
Well, folks, we've wrapped up our first couple days of walleye fishing out here in the Western Basin of Lake Erie. We've had some fair fishing, could have been better. Uh, didn't catch a lot of the 28 to 30 inch and a little bit above fish that we'd like to. A lot of dirty water that we dealt with, but we can deal with that once we find clean water. Right now, we've been kind of forced into a rain delay. We've got a couple days of, of heavy rain and uh, temps in the 40s, winds in the 20s, so not real conducive to even getting out. But it's given us the option to rest, reflect, and regroup here, plan our strategies for the last few days of our fishing, which the weather sounds to be fantastic at this point. Uh, with that, these water temps are like 40 to 42 degrees. And these fish are a little sluggish yet. Everything that we have caught so far has been pre-spawn and even to the point where they're not even fully developed eggs. So we need very slow presentations. Crankbait presentations are key here early on on Lake Erie, but you want to pull the thing slow. We're talking anywhere from a mile an hour, perhaps a little bit less, on up to maybe one, two to one, four. Crankbait selection. Uh, reef runners have ruled out here for many, many years. They're actually developed by Scott Staker. I can reach my arm and point over to Marblehead from where we're at, where he has his uh, business located. And they were developed on this lake. They work all over, but the key to them is it's more of a banana bait, and they've got a nice little kick, even at slow speed. So we're barely moving these plugs but they're kicking back and forth, and that's the key to getting bit, particularly in some of this stained water. Uh, there's been a lot of, I shouldn't say imitators, but lures that have been made that are very similar. People learn the lesson of what works. Uh, bandits work bombers. Deep down husky jerks are probably three of the more popular ones. But if you stick with that genre of bait, go with some bolder colors, you should be all right. There's a lot of guys out here more than willing to share information. The body of water is absolutely massive. You don't have to worry about getting in somebody's so-called spot. So that being said, stick with us. We're gonna go out two more days, perhaps three, depending on uh, what we get for fish. We're gonna find some good ones to show you and stay tuned. to get our first fish of the day here. We're in some pretty tough conditions. We've had some varying uh, weather with fronts and so forth coming through. Pretty good wind. We're actually hiding from it uh, on the west side of South Bass Island here. Water's quite dirty. We're running really gaudy colored plugs to do it. Catching some of these smaller males. We're gonna keep sorting through, hopping around, see if we can't find a spot that's got a few females that'll go, but uh, this one will darn sure eat. We got our camera lady reeling in a fish on a flat line that we were discussing earlier. There seems to be something to that. Uh, it's fairly rough out here. The surgeon of the boards may just have been a little bit much. These fish aren't exactly super active right now. So we think we're getting into a little better program here. There we got control. Perfect, perfect. Uh oh, get in there! Ha <laughs> ha! Good job, Val. And oh, nice one. Nice very one. nice one. Credit, credit where credit is due. Val picked the plug, and he hit the fly. And we'll do a little discussion about that once we get get uh, her out of there. Very, very nice, Val. Very perfect. I'm going to take a little minute here and uh, discuss our setup, how Val pulled this fish. As I mentioned, she had uh, went through a box of 100 plugs, found her favorite color here, 
It's purple. Purples are very big on Erie, a, a good color at all times, and particularly now, that's everything we're hearing as far as the reports are purples. Uh, so we went with that, but the most interesting part of this is it's something that I play with a little bit at home on Lake Oahe uh, with a bit smaller flies because our, our fish aren't this big on average. But I went to a pike type fly, went with the purple and a little contrasting yellow on the tail of it there, and just tied it on some 15 pound uh, line here, ran it back about 18 inches. And a lot of these fish, you know, we're thinking they're not terribly active, maybe hitting short. And, you know, he come up, he may not have taken that plug. He went and grabbed the fly here. There's days on Oahe, literally 80, 90% of the fish would come on a fly on tough days. So we're monkeying around with it here. We lost a really good fish, I actually broke the line off. I went to a heavier leader, I had a 10, I actually broke the dog on line a couple days ago. So now we got a little more confidence in this. We're gonna run some more uh, to finish the setup. A very typical setup on Lake Erie is 10 pound monofilament. XT has always been the, kind of the leader as far as uh, the amount of line that's used. And we're running them on St. Croix Icon rods using uh, Okuma cold water reels, which are very smooth. Real easy setup. Just uh, go to your trolling Bible. There's a nice app for that. Find your feet back on your different plugs. Uh, obviously pay attention to your locators. In this case, I'm running Garmin this year. Very happy to be with them. Uh, checking out the live scope stuff. It's all new, exciting technology. But the big thing is just uh, be confident in your setups and, and keep going. Eventually you'll find these fish. Well, something uh, I just alluded to in the last fish we caught is colors. So we sent this plug right back out. We ran up to make another pass and it's picked up another one. So what we're probably gonna do is we will look for another plug just like this. And even our other uh, brands of lures, we'll look for very similar color schemes on them. So we may finally be getting something dialed in here. We're sharing some information with uh, some other guys out of South and North Dakota and they're spanking them. What did you say they had, Chris? 330s, some 25s and a 31 inch. So they're on them. We're actually, uh, we're not too darn proud to take the info. They're a little bit west and north of us and that's where we're just gonna pull over to and see if we can't get into some of these better fish. Ooh, I'm getting nervous. You know, so I'm checking my drag here too. So when I get hooked up direct with the fish, I know he's got some slip if he needs it. Uh, locationally wise, we're out at the Bass Islands and we're staying on South Bass and we're actually a little bit above Middle Bass right on the Canadian line. And this fish, oh my God. <laughs> I tell you, this is why a guy keeps doing it even when you get old. Oh boy, that's why. Okay, we got a sideways hook fish here which explains the difficulty beam into Chris there. Good job. Uh, well, that's about a third the size I thought we had, but it's a fish nonetheless. All right, that uh, turned out to be a little anticlimactic. I thought we had a heck of a good fish on there. It uh, actually had gotten hooked in the side. We're pulling it in sideways the whole way, but it's given us some clues on, on trying to catch these fish here. One of the feet back, meaning the depth. These are all suspended fish and colors. It gives the, the fish different profiles. If they're below, they'll see that greenish stuff. If they're coming at it level, they'll see the chrome type stuff. So just a good flashy lure, obviously it works. I'd like to take a moment here to pass along a little trip tip. If you're planning a trip out to the Western Basin of Lake Erie, April's typically the time frame, And that's when these guys are getting all of these big fish, a lot of 28 to 30 inch, sometimes even better uh, female walleyes. And looking for accommodations, you may want to consider coming out to South Bass Island. I stayed on the mainland as I'm looking over pointing at it for many, many years when I'd come out here. I was always curious about the islands and finally uh, came out last year via Island Club Rentals. I work with those fellas, they provide our accommodations, very generous to us. But the key to being out here is we don't have to pass through this huge expanse to get out where much of the fishing is surrounding the islands in all directions. And then also 
being we have wind issues on such a big body of water, the islands provide protection. So we can put in a nice put-in bay, which is very protected, slip around an island on the downwind side, uh, be completely out of the wind, and it's great. On an ancillary note, the island is absolutely beautiful. There's a ton of history here. There's the Admiral Perry Tower. I could go on and on and on. A quick Google search and you can find it all yourself. But it's darn sure a destination that you're going to want to consider. And like I say, I work with the folks at Island Club Rentals. They've got a ton of fishing houses available uh, set up just for fishermen. This one will definitely hit the pan. Uh, we'll find some bigger girls, we'll let those go, but we'll turn around, we'll get this back out, and we'll continue this in, in quest of a good one. So we just got that other fish in. It was on an inside line on a board. I pulled the other inside line on a board. We're gonna totally replicate everything we're doing here, right down to the rods and the reels and the lure, of course, is what got bit. On the rod and uh, reel setup, I run Okuma cold water reels. Very accurate, very dependable. The darn things always count your line out. They don't trip and goof up there. As you can see, easy enough to get right back to my 66 foot. Run St. Croix rods, have for many, many years. Uh, best rods on earth, believe it folks, they are. We got another bite. I'm gonna get this thing boarded up and take the other fish and hopefully this is a better one. Flipper up here. Now we're getting back in to the 28 inch type stuff that we want. That's a good 28 inch fish. I'll throw her in the well for now, maybe get some stills. We're gonna reset our lines, give her a good measurement. Big thing is I wanna reset these lines. We're onto something here, folks. We wanna capitalize on it. This may be our last day. They're talking wind tomorrow, so by God, we're gonna get what we can get. Stick around, see what we come up with. Perfect. What do you think of the fishing lake here now, Val? I like it a lot. <laughs> okay, great. What we'll do is we're going to put that in the live well for a second. We're going to reset our lines or make a decision here and then uh, get a few picks. But crazy how it goes. I mean, sometimes there's luck involved. We are literally pulling our lines. I look back and I, huh, there's a board dragon. So awesome. good enough on a, on a fresh lure change, too. We went from purples to kind of yellow polka dotty type stuff. You're gonna sleep with that thing, aren't you? <laughs> okay. We have a light bass. Wasn't quite sure if we even had a fish on there. The board just started hanging. The darn white bass hit. And once again, we're playing around with a fly behind these plugs. And in this case, it's a pike type fly. It's probably got a Got a one or a one-aught hook. It's got a stout hook because these fish are big. But kind of cool to catch something else. We'll turn him back and reset. And away we go. This particular setup is a reef runner. I can't remember the name of it. He's always got some pretty pretty wild names but you can see it's a awful radical pattern it's got chartreuse it looks like he got beat up and then put sunglasses on to cover his black eyes got some squigglies in the white got a purple tail which that tail kicks it's nice to have a contrasting color on that tail i think that makes a difference the reef runner's got a, a nose down hunting action like they're searching and you can see that that purple tail kick back and forth and this is even at the very slower speed. This is at, you know, that one mile per hour stuff, which is key. These baits have plenty of action going that slow. They're just not a stick in the water. Hey, folks.
folks, run out last morning here. We knew there was some weather brewing. Nothing on the screen when we ran out. Got a fish close out of foot and bay here. Got out, literally dropped the last line in the water. Had a fish instantly looked up. Clouds brewing on the horizon. Come in for safety. Caught the edge of it. Hopefully it's going to blow by. But just <laughs> the way it goes. I think we're going to get out fish if we can get out. We're looking for some better fish. Uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Run out, get a fish, run away from rain, run back out, get a fish instantly. Now we're just resetting here once again, looking looking for the better fish, talking to a lot of the guys on the island here. They're running into the, the same thing. When they do have their good days, they're, they're getting their limits of fish and maybe getting one good one. We're hoping that's gonna change. Actually, even with these fronts, the conditions are improving. The water's warming uh, slightly, and the water's also clearing up quite a bit. With that said, we're gonna get our last line in here, see if we can't scratch up a good one, regardless, these four or five pound fish aren't, aren't a bad thing to have all day. He absolutely ate that reef runner. We ran out, got our line set, set the last one in the holder, went off and then got run off by rain. But we got a little tangle here. We're gonna get her going and find a better fish. I'm thinking we maybe have a, yeah, there we finally got a better one. Get her in there. There you go, gotta lift up. There you go, good job. Perfect. These are what we've been looking for. I've had a good feeling about this morning. Uh, we're right at the end of one of our uh, better passes numbers wise, looking at the Garmin here. The mapping on these things are incredible. First year with them, very happy. But just a nice 28 inch type fish. We're gonna throw her in the well. We're not keeping these. We just want a few for some good pictures later. And I'm gonna keep the comment short because I want these lines out. We're gonna get some more. All right, folks, we're gonna wrap up this episode of Focus Outdoors TV. We got uh, some big weather out there, six to eight foot rollers. Very happy with the Lund 219 Pro VGL that I run. Uh, got us in safely without even so much as a splash. Quick note, this is a great destination to come. Come with a 20 foot boat or bigger know how to run the darn thing you'll be safe out there uh, if you're looking for information on the area those there's no better source than lake erie greater shores and islands talk to the folks super people they'll set you up with some uh, good accommodations like we have with island club rentals here get you the scoop on all the information all the attractions in the area i tell you these people are fantastic this is a fishing community early in the spring a resort community after that uh, if you're looking to catch some big fish do yourself a favor, get on out here. Thanks for staying tuned.